Supporting children's emotional needs. How can I provide emotional stability for my children when my partner often creates chaos? Giving kids a sense of security. Despite the turmoil at home, how do you create a calm port in the storm for your children? When a narcissistic partner generates chaos, children crave stability, provide an oasis with consistent routines, maintain school, meal, and bedtime rituals, shared activities, cook, exercise, play together daily, physical affection, frequently hug, high five, and say, I love you. Earn affirmations. Remind them they are worthy, valued, and secure. Knowing dad would walk me to school each morning gave me comfort amidst the chaos at home. Children gain resilience through simple daily rituals of connection. While my partner frequently generates chaos with his narcissistic outbursts, I strive to be a rock of stability for our children. No matter how much turbulence surrounds them, I maintain comforting rituals like reading bedtime stories, baking cookies on the weekend, and playing board games after dinner. Keeping these traditions consistent to anchors them amidst the storms. I also make sure to schedule dedicated one-on-one -on -one time where we can talk openly about their feelings. Just having my full, compassionate presence for focused intervals provides refuge. Occasionally, when things escalate, I take them on special mother-children outings to fully remove them from the situation, even if just to get ice cream. Sheltering them from the approximately isn't always possible, but serving as their safe, loving harbor teaches resilience. What should I tell my children about narcissism without speaking negatively about their other parents? Explaining narcissism to kids without bashing the other parent. How do you help kids understand without bad mouthing? When explaining narcissism, focus on behaviors over labels. Use examples. Dad interrupts when others talk because he needs attention. It's not respectful. Everyone deserves a turn. Mom brags a lot and needs to feel superior. But it's unhealthy to compare yourself to others. Huh? Parents should empower, not criticize you. I'll always remind you of your strengths. Framing issues through specific actions rather than attacks preserve the kid's relationship with their dad. You can build children's self-worth and understanding without inflicting parental wounds. When the children ask the hard questions about their dad, I try to explain narcissism in simple, non-judgmental terms appropriate for their age. We talk about narcissism as a pattern involving very low self-esteem that causes hurtful behaviors. I share resources to increase their understanding, being careful not to vilify. They know their father struggles with childhood wounds, mood regulation, entitlement, and empathy. I reassure them that mental health exists on a spectrum which everyone can improve. Mostly, I emphasize that his choices are not their responsibility or fault. While his healing is beyond their control, they can grow in compassion for all human struggle. Managing confrontations. What strategies can help me stay calm in front of the children during confrontations with my narcissistic partner? Preserving calm when confronted by narcissism. How do you model stability when provoked? To remain calm when facing narcissistic barbs, try pausing. Count to ten before responding. Lowering volume. Speak softly to prevent escalation. Asserting boundaries. Calmly repeat what behavior you won't accept. Avoiding insults. Criticize actions, not character. Using I feel statements. Focus on how you're affected. Taking deep breaths rather than reacting. Diffused tense confrontations with my ex. You can't control their behavior, but you can model level-headedness. When forced to confront my narcissistic partner in front of the kids, I consciously work to model stability, despite the inner turmoil. As advice columns recommend, I take deep breaths before responding, which prevents me from reacting rashly and escalating things. If needed, I'll count silently to ten until the initial flush of anger passes. I also make sure to speak softly and evenly, avoiding shouting matches or heated barbs which could traumatize our children. If accusations begin flying, I stick to facts and observable behavior versus attacking character or making generalizations. Occasionally to protect the kids from uh, the worst vitriol, uh, I will uh, proactively redirect them by sending them to play in their room. Remaining calm in their presence reassures them amid chaos. It also pries power from the narcissist who wants the dramatics. Third, reinforcing kids' self-worth. How can I reassure my children about their worth when they are subjected to criticism or indifference from their narcissistic parent? Instilling healthy self-esteem. Despite criticism at home, how do you help kids know their value? Counter criticism with concrete praise. Attribute strengths. You're creative, thoughtful, and determined. Appreciate interests. You play guitar beautifully. Cheer efforts. I'm proud of how you persisted. Catalog talents. You have a real gift for basketball. Share positive feedback. Your teacher said you're a great reader. 
My daughter beamed when I praised her talent. For gymnastics, children believe the voices that affirm their gifts. When the kids face criticism or indifference from their narcissistic father, I shower them with love and praise to counteract any distorted self-perception. Each night, we go around sharing our proudest moment from the day, a small ritual that reinforces their value. I also give them frequent, specific compliments about their skills in sports, music, art, or how they care for animals. When one starts doubting themselves because their father ignored an achievement, I dig out old trophies or ribbons as tangible proof of their talents. My effusive celebrations of their unique goodness, even for small wins, motivates them intrinsically. Though the scar tissue from emotional neglect won't disappear overnight, consistent affirmation builds their resiliency. Establishing boundaries. How do I handle situations where my partner undermines my parenting decisions? Setting limits around co-parenting. How can you affirm your role when undermined? When your co-parent contradicts your rules, reassert yourself calmly. Reiterate your decisions. I've decided Sarah can't go to that party regardless of what you've offered. Refer to agreement. We've agreed I have final say over extracurriculars. Discuss privately. Speak to them alone versus publicly arguing. Involve professionals. Seek mediation if needed. Let kids know. I realize your dad said yes, but I'm not changing my mind. Respectfully holding my ground preserved my boundaries. You can't control their choices, but you can consistently uphold your own. When my narcissistic spouse blatantly contradicts or undermines my parenting choices, I stand firm while avoiding heated conflict. If he impulsively tells the kids they can break one of my rules, I calmly reiterate my original position once we have privacy. For example, I'll firmly repeat that, no, they still may not stay up past their bedtime, regardless of Dad's remark. If he tries pressuring me to change my stance through guilt trips or bribery, I make it clear I will always make decisions based on their well-being, not his manipulation. Of course, explaining my rationale doesn't guarantee compliance from someone irrational. But preserving my boundaries, even in the face of his attempted sabotage, maintains consistency for our children. Are there ways to set boundaries with my narcissistic partner regarding our children? Setting clear boundaries it's around co-parenting. How can you protect kids from narcissistic damage? It's safeguard kids by establishing these boundaries. Limit unsupervised access if needed to prevent emotional abuse. Insist on professional counseling before granting overnight visits. Require discussions of schedules and rules occur out of kids' earshot. Don't allow use of kids as messengers or bargaining chips. Refuse to engage when they criticize your parenting. Securing supervision ensured the kids' safety and well-being. Boundaries minimize narcissistic injury while protecting kids' best interests. Given the dynamics with my narcissistic co-parent, professional counselors helped me establish necessary boundaries to protect the kids. For instance, based on concerning incidents, they recommended only allowing supervised visitation to avoid emotional abuse when I'm not present. And while heartbreaking, limiting access safeguards, they're still developing self-esteem. We also agreed communications about visit logistics will occur through a court-mandated parenting app to prevent using the children as messengers. Any medical or education decisions require my consent. Of course, narcissists resent restrictions. But I've learned I must often make unilateral choices for the good of our children, even if unfair or inconvenient for him. Fostering empathy and compassion. What's the best way to encourage empathy and compassion in my children amidst this environment? Nurturing empathy in kids, that despite narcissistic behavior at home, how can kids stay kind amid callousness? Promote compassion by leading by example, validate others' feelings, assist those in need, praising kind acts, applaud when kids share, include or help, reading inspirational books, choose stories exalting compassion, volunteering together, serve at a shelter or clean up a park, monitoring media, ensure TV, movies and games promote kindness, volunteering at the animal shelter nurtured empathy during a difficult time. With patient guidance, children blossom with empathy and care, supporting your own well-being. How can I keep my own mental health and well-being intact while navigating these challenges? Caring for yourself while parenting with a narcissist. How do you refuel when emotionally drained? Replenish yourself. Seek counseling. Work through issues with a professional. Confide in friends. Connect for comfort and advice. Exercise daily. Release endorphins and tension. Journal. Process challenging days through writing. Unwind 
unwind with hobbies. Lose yourself in creative activities. Jaring wine and laughs with friends resuscitated my spirit. You must care for yourself before you can care for others. How do I prevent my children from internalizing any negative comments or behaviors directed at them? I constantly reassure the children that their father's criticism or neglect reflects his own issues, not who they are. We talk about not absorbing others' opinions as fact, especially from someone with distorted thinking. I remind them of counterexamples that disprove his attacks. Teachers praise, friends who enjoy their company, talents and interests that bring them joy. When they share demeaning remarks he made, uh, I repudiate those messages of unworthiness. My unconditional love provides an antidote to his conditional affection. And they also know that any time hurtful words are used, they should come directly to me so I can restore their sense of value with encouragement and warmth. How do I address instances where my partner uses gifts or privileges to manipulate our children? When my narcissistic partner attempts to manipulate the children through lavish gifts, I discuss the difference between material rewards and genuine care. We talk about how real relationships are built on mutual understanding, not bribes. When they become upset that I won't buy them expensive gadgets like their dad, I explain that we show love through quality time, not toys. We read children's books about unconditional love. I also model selfless behavior by doing volunteer work with them. Occasionally, we even return extravagant presents if they become a wedge issue, allowing the kids to make that choice themselves. They understand superficial gifts can't compensate for real presence and emotional intimacy. What can I do to ensure my children understand that the narcissistic behaviors are not their fault? I talk openly with the kids about narcissism as a spectrum disorder involving unhealthy coping mechanisms. We discuss how people manage emotions differently based on upbringing and brain wiring. Their father's reactions reflect his own struggles, not who they are as people. I share age-appropriate resources explaining narcissism matter-of-factly as a behavior pattern, avoiding harshly demonizing their dad. They know they cannot control or cure his issues. But when incidents occur, we process their feelings and reaffirm their blamelessness. I also work with a child therapist to ensure the kids don't internalize any dysfunction. Most importantly, our family motto reassures them, you are worthy, well and enough. How should I handle it if my children begin to mimic some of the narcissistic behaviors? If the children start mirroring their father's narcissism, I immediately address specific actions without lambasting their character. We have family meetings focused on empathy, accountability, and values when self-centered behavior emerges. I praise them for demonstrating compassion and willingness to improve. We role-play incidents considering different perspectives. Their therapist provides tools to channel attention-seeking urges into healthy pursuits like art or sports. I give them leadership roles at home to satisfy age-appropriate autonomy desires. By tackling behaviors early before patterns form and offering unconditional support, I aim to guide them down a path of compassion and conscience. How do I ensure that I'm not overly compensating or becoming too permissive in an attempt to counterbalance the other parent's behavior? I'm trying to counteract the narcissistic dad's extremes, I sometimes worry I'll swing too far the other way into overindulgence or permissiveness. When considering requests, I pause and reflect. Is this truly beneficial for them or just overcompensating? Discussing dilemmas with my parenting support group provides perspective. We examine potential motivations. Am I reactive versus proactively responsive? I also engage the kids in decision-making to teach balanced thinking, ultimately upholding consistent boundaries, even if I sometimes disappoint them. It builds character. Navigating between nurture and discipline requires vigilance, but teaching self-regulation and consequences prepares them for adulthood. What are ways to ensure our children maintain important relationships with other family members? Members, even if the narcissistic parent tries to create barriers. Although my estranged spouse often sabotages extended family ties, I facilitate ongoing connection through visits, calls, texts, and cards. Seeing loving grandparents and cousins provides my children with a healthy foundation. And for relatives wary of direct contact, we share fond memories and photos privately at home to keep bonds alive. If communication is cut off, I explain it results from the narcissist's paranoia, not their own own fault. For toxic relatives enabling abuse, I limit contact. But for most, I preserve access, coach them on empathy, and supervise interactions to foster supportive relationships, even from a distance. Though challenging, surrounding kids with family offering genuine care outweighs isolate.